Hi there! In this video, I discuss my experience with the Hilleberg Namach after using the tent for the last several years across a variety of different situations, ranging from forests and grasslands to glaciers and alpine. If you find what I share helpful, then I suggest you also check out my other videos on Hilleberg tents, one of which even got a Facebook like from co-founder himself, Bo Hilleberg, something that I think is pretty cool. There's much to be said about the Hilleberg Namach, so I'll start with a little tent history. The original version of the Namach was released back in 1983, the same year I was born, and was loosely based off the architecture of an earlier tent model, the Hilleberg Caron. As popular as the two vestibuled, three to four person Carons were, Mr. Hilleberg wanted to have a tent that was just as strong, but lighter and sized for two people. Here's a few of my pros and cons on the Hilleberg Namach, as well as my overall summary on the tent's best uses. Pros. Easy setup, superb quality and durability, good ventilation for a four season tent, and multi-pitch versatility. I love the simplicity of setup that most tunnel tents have to offer, and the Namach is no exception. It sets up fast due to the fact that there's only two identical poles to install, and thus no guesswork as to which pole goes where. Another advantage is that both the inner and outer tents, as well as the optional footprint, can pitch as one unit. This really speeds up and simplifies setup, something that's especially useful when weather conditions turn hostile. Also, the stakeout and guy line tensioning process is, in my opinion, pretty intuitive, and I particularly like the fact that all this setup can be done easily enough with gloves on, something that's critically important in harsh winter conditions. Without question, the Hilleberg Namach is built from some of the most top shelf materials available. For example, Hilleberg's Carillon 1800 fabric, a variety of high quality, high tear strength, siliconized nylon is used for the fly. In my experience, this fabric is far superior to other cheaper cell nylon fabrics and PU coated material options. The tent's robust skeleton is formed using large diameter 10.25 mm DAC tent poles. These poles, coupled with the Namach's aerodynamic profile and fine craftsmanship, allow the tent to comfortably handle most situations. As a bit of a side note, DAC stands for Tong A Aluminum Corporation, which is a South Korean engineering and manufacturing company based on Incheon, South Korea. DAC is an industry leader, and in my honest experience, their tent poles, which to my knowledge Hilleberg uses exclusively, tend to be stronger, lighter, and less prone to cracking than some of the other less expensive options I've seen. For more information on Hilleberg build quality, strength, and materials, please see some of my other video content, such as the videos I made on the Hilleberg Acto and the Hilleberg Alec. In terms of ventilation, I really love the large, ported, adjustable vents located at the head and foot ends of the Namach. For me, this was one of the tent's main selling points. Each vent has two separate layers, an outer of mesh and an inner of breathable nylon that can be opened or closed from inside the tent. Similar to the vents, the door has two layers as well, all of which can be adjusted independently. The roomy vestibule is just large enough for gear and simple cooking activities and the downward sloping angle on the ported vents means that you can open them up in the rain and not have to worry too much about it getting wet inside. You also have the option of closing everything up, including the breathable nylon vent panels which will prevent spin drift from entering your sleeping area. The Namach really is ideally suited to a bit of wind, and in my experience, adhering to this practice whenever possible will help keep your tent interior drier for longer. A few last noteworthy points I'd like to make about the Namach are, I like the bright cheery yellow of the interior, which has an interestingly positive effect on the mine in bad weather, and I also love the fact that the Namach can be pitched in alternative modes, my favorite of which being fly and footprint only. I'll get more in depth with this in a separate video, so make sure to keep an eye out for that one. And now for the things I don't like so much about the tent. Cons. Cost, interior length, and ventilation. At over $900 USD as of mid-2023, this tent is hugely expensive, obviously. For many people, this will be too great a barrier to entry, but as I said, you get what you pay for, so it's important to purchase the best quality that you can afford. Because of the quality of materials and construction, the Namach offers a longevity that cheaper tents can't. So the more nights you spend in the tent, the more cost-effective it becomes. For example, though my Hilleberg Acto cost me around $600 US, I've probably spent close to 100 nights in it over the last number of years. 
This works out to be about $6 per night, which is a lot cheaper than staying in a hotel. If you think of buying and using a tent in this way, like an investment, with an initial cost that's distributed over an asset lifespan, the price tag isn't so much a focus. If you intend to use the Hilleberg Namach a reasonable amount, say 20 or more nights per year, I'd say it would be money well spent in the long term. However, if you're a casual camper and do trips only on special occasions, say just a few nights per year, I feel that paying this much for a tent would be hard to justify and thus not something I would recommend. But that's just me. Regarding the sizing of the Namach, I found the two-person model to be plenty wide for two people. However, if you're a taller person, the inner tent is definitely too short. I'm only 5 foot 9 inches tall, or 175 centimeters. As long as I'm sleeping head-end, close to the door, the tent fits me alright. There's just enough space between the toe box of my sleeping bag and the sloping inner tent wall that I can generally avoid contact with the inner tent fabric. The reason this is important is because if the two items make contact, condensation will build up and transfer to your sleeping bag. If you're taller than about 6 foot or 183 centimeters, I can pretty much guarantee that your head and toes will be touching the ends of the inner tent. Especially if you use a thicker sleeping pad, have bigger feet, and your sleeping bag has a lot of loft. Now, this may or may not be important to you, as it really just comes down to what you'll be using the tent for. For example, some people will happily sacrifice on comfort in order to minimize weight. For other people, comfort is the priority and weight's not even a consideration. But regardless of your preferences, I do think this issue is something to be aware of. Now circling back to ventilation, and the reason I've listed this point as both a pro and a con for the Namach, again, it really does come down to what sort of situations you'll be using the tent for. The extended tent fly on the Namach, which goes all the way down to ground level, is a good compromise between ventilation and protection. I feel it's useful to keep this compromise in mind when you're tent shopping, because the reality is that the Namach will never be as airy as a quality 3 season tent, and it will never be as storm proof as a 4 season tent with a proper snow skirt. If you're confident you'll be tenting mainly in one type of season, then it might be wise to buy a tent that's built specific for that kind of situation. One other very minor issue I have with the tent is that it would be really nice to have more mesh pockets similar to say a Macpac Olympus or a Minaret. Having that additional storage really adds a lot of convenience at a negligible weight penalty. And so my conclusion. Overall, the Namach provides a balanced compromise between strength, weight, and ease of setup. It's a great choice for demanding four season conditions because that's what it was designed for. That said, it can also serve well as a confidence-boosting backpacking refuge, especially when weight is shared between multiple people. If you want a versatile tent that can handle a wide range of situations, I'd recommend the Namach. However, if you're very tall, or only intend to use the tent for more leisurely types of fair weather trips once in a while, this tent would probably be a bit overkill. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. Cheers.